Hello, everybody, and welcome to the JLR webinar. My name is Manik, and I will be your presenter today. You are currently in listen-only mode, so to communicate with me, please use the uh, chat or question buttons on your right, and I will answer your questions at the end of the uh, webinar. So this uh, webinar is on prospecting with uh, JLR tools. And before we start, I'd just like to do a little recap on your uh, package. Uh, and I assume you know that uh, you, most of you have the, uh, the 100 solds uh, monthly. And uh, you also have 20 comparables generator monthly as well. And the rest of the options are uh, a la carte. And, uh, and your access is, uh, your JLR access rather, is through your, either your intranet or your extranet. So that covers the, uh, the, the basis of your service. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, in this webinar we'll be showing you uh, various ways that you can prospect with, uh, with JLR. Um, not many people use JLR for prospecting, uh, as most of you use it for, you know, to find comps and information on specific properties. So this is, uh, this is rather new, and uh, I'm glad that you're uh, listening to this webinar. Now, the, uh, the very first method is, uh, uh, as I said, you know, maybe a little uh, non-traditional, but uh, the uh, the, the purpose is to find owners that have uh, mortgages that are potentially up for renewal, which means zero penalty. Okay, and I'm sure you guys have come across um, um, owners that are not even aware that if they sell their property in the middle of their term that they'll have, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars penalty. And, you know, sometimes that's annoying. Now, if you can, you know, find owners that don't have that, uh, um, that restriction, then uh, the incentive to sell might be a little bit higher than you know just random um, random searches for uh, uh, for leads. So and the way to go about this and let just me log in is actually in your um, and let's go in English in your sole property search and this is great because that's included in your package. So. You all remember this uh, menu on your left. The second option, sold properties. You could actually go in that option. And let's say I work at the Pierrefonds area. And this is, you know, I would like to find owners in that area. So you all know that you have these tabs here. I would click on municipality and I would put um, Montreal. Right? And then you know that you know, when you put Montreal, then you can open up the borough and you could put Pierrefonds. Okay, now how can I find owners that have mortgages that are, you know, potentially up for renewal? Well, if I base my, um, my, um, my search on what CMHC says, that most terms are five years, and when they say most, they say up to 90%, then what I could do is say I'm going to go back, okay, five years, and to find all uh, owners that bought a property in Pierrefonds. So this is easy to do. I will use my range here. So what I could do is go back five years. So I would put 2011 and I would put, uh, I want um, uh, maybe 1201. So that's the beginning of December. Okay. To 2011, 1231. Oops. No. 2011, 0101. Okay, I don't want to go too far. So that's plus five years. That's 2016. Okay, and then 2011. Okay, let's say uh, 0131. Yeah, that makes more sense. So beginning of the year, so I would be looking for mortgages that are coming due if they're a, a five-year term. At beginning of uh, that's it, 2016, the first month of 2016. I hope that makes sense to you. I could specify a, a price range, so anything above 300,000. And I could say I only want residential, okay, and I will put uh, actually even just single dwellings, okay. So I hope you're following me. So I'm asking sales for sales that occurred five years back, just a one-month frame though, so in January uh, 2011. And again, my purpose is to find owners that have uh, mortgages that are potentially up for renewal. So I click on search, and remember since you're in sole property search, this is included in your package, and there's no fees related to this. So see the system found 13 uh, transactions. And if you recall, you're in pre-selection, which means that you don't have the full address, you have the street name, you don't have the street number, nor the price. So I could say choose all, and remember, um, most of the time, uh, our users have a lot left in their month. 
where they're, you know, they're uh, uh, 100 cells that you can use. So this is a good way uh, to use it up. Okay, so I'll click on next, and this won't cost me anything again. And then I can have all the information for each property. Now, for example, if um, I'd like to know a little bit more about this one here, that's the property on 4237 Acre Street, because um, sometimes, you know, users will say, well, what if they, uh, these owners that, you know, bought the property five years ago, what if they, they actually sold it and they're not owners anymore? So you might want to go and check in quick search, okay, and have a little bit more information on that property. So what you can do is go up here and type that, the address. Remember, quick search, top right, it gives you instant access to the property info and historical sales. So I found it here, okay, and then I can go see the property. Okay, now I will go down a little bit and um, I want to explain what all the links are on this property because this is a different uh, webinar. But the purpose of going in this property fish is just to see the transactions and see if there's anything uh, after 2011. So as you see here, the last sale was in 2011. So this is the, the last and we see the mortgage was in um, as well, you know, just a little bit before the sale. So and, and there is no resale after. So this owner maybe has a mortgage that will be coming due and you know that we have the deeds that you can open up. So I could call this uh, James Robert uh, uh, Pritchard and I have a 411 hyperlink here that I can open. Remember it's not linked to the do not call list. Okay. And it's a good way to, uh, you know, start a conversation with the owner and, you know, just, you know, um, I'm mentioning that, uh, if, you know, if uh, there's a mortgage that's up for renewal and if it's thinking of selling, it's a good time to do it at this point instead of, you know, you renew and then you sell in one year, then you're full penalty because you're in your first year of your term. So this is interesting information to relate to a, uh, you know, an owner. So that's one way to do it. So with the uh, going back um, five years, another way to do prospecting with JLR is another uh, non-traditional method, if I may say, is with 60-day uh, notices and uh, uh, successions. So uh, in this example, let's say I work the Outremont area. So we go in the third option here called create a report and I would go in municipality okay and again I would put Montreal and at the end of the web, uh, webinar I will let you know uh, the fees that are uh, linked to these searches and uh, so that you know exactly um, how much this would cost you and there's also packages that you can get okay so I'll explain that at the end of the webinar so Montreal and then I will enter uh, Outremont all right, and this is pretty straightforward. Now, in this um, search, uh, create a report page, there is a field called type, and it's only in create a report that you will find this field. It's actually a very interesting field because it lists the various types of transactions that you can search on. So I have 60-day notices, legal mortgages, repossessions, sales, transmissions, and whatnot. Okay, so this is very interesting, and I'll just keep it on 60-day notice. Now. We have to change the date because it remained 2011, and I don't want you know 60-day notice, notices that are five years old. So I'm going to go and put 2015-0901. So I'm going back to September up till now, okay? And I'm going to remove my $300,000 filter, and then I'm going to just put all residential. Okay, so I'm looking for 60-day notices in Outremont, and why I'm doing that in the prospecting mode is these owners may have a little bit more incentive to sell the property as opposed to just random prospecting, okay? Um, maybe loss of employment, uh, we don't know the reason, but uh, what we can tell these owners is that instead of giving back the keys to the uh, to the bank, they're better off selling the property at uh, fair market value, and uh, it's all in the approach, right? And uh, uh, but if you have a, a good plan when you speak with that that owner, and you have a uh, uh, maybe a uh, comparables generator all uh, already, and uh, all your um, <clears throat> dossier monté, as we say in French, then this could be a uh, you know a, a nice way to approach them. Now I would click on search. And uh, if ever there's fees related, always remember JLR will tell you that uh, this search costs you this much, and then you can say yes or no. And luckily, there's only two, and I always like to say this. It's, it's a good thing because it means our market is a, uh, is, is a healthy or real estate market. But just to show you, nonetheless, let's say I say choose all, 
And just by the way, this is $2 each, so this would cost me, uh, uh, rather $3 each, so this would cost me $6. So here I, uh, I have 245 Bloom Field, and uh, I have the deed here. The deed is always a good thing to open uh, because it get, gives you a little bit more information. So then you can see who the, uh, the, the creditor is. In this case, it's the, uh, the Ville de Montréal. And so we happen to have a type of deed where the city once a year lists all the uh, the properties that have not paid their taxes, and this happens to be one of them. So not only do we have 245 Bloomfield, but we have Hutchison, we have La Joie d'Avant and whatnot. So um, in a way, I always say you kind of hit the jackpot because you get many addresses and you only paid for one. But this is just to tell you that it's always a good thing to open up the deed. Now, oops. Now when you have the deed, I just clicked on that just went out um, when you have the deed you may think well what, what if it's already on the uh, you know on the MLS you do know that you can actually um, look up a property and if it's on the MLS it'll say so let's say I want to look at that uh, property I was looking at 245 Bloomfield that was a 60-day notice what I can do is again go in quick search I'll just transfer to English 245, 245 Bloomfield and see what uh, JLR has on this property. So it's not up for sale. You would see it right at the top here. And um, you have your 60-day notice here. You have the information. And then, again, you could have opened the deed here. Um, if you want, you can order a index of uh, immovable, index des meubles, just to see if it was radiated. Mind you, it's very recent. But it's always a good thing uh, to actually go and check if it's still a uh, 60-day notice. Okay? You have the name here. And, again, you have a 411 hyperlink. And, as I mentioned, every, it's, uh, everything is in the, the, uh, the approach. Okay. If I go back to create a report, then I could also, let's say, stay in Outremont, look uh, for um, successions. Okay, So instead of 60-day notice, I could go here and click on transmission, Okay, and that's the legal uh, name for successions. And then just leave everything as is and just click on search. Okay, and then it's the same principle. I will have a pre-selection. At this point, there is no uh, charge because I don't have all the information. I can click on choose all, or I can just browse and select a few in the sense that um, um, maybe I've sold properties on those streets or whatnot, any reason. Or as I mentioned, you can click on choose all and click on next. And again, JLR will let me know if there's any fees related to this. I have a trainer package, so I don't have any fees. Um, so the system, uh, um, I checked four properties, and the system provides me with the full address at this point and also the deeds. Now, what's uh, interesting with uh, successions uh, for prospecting, um, well, whoever inherits the property doesn't always live uh, in the property, sometimes it's the uh, you know the children or whatnot, and sometimes they can live in another city. Or if the property is a duplex, triplex, or whatnot, and there's tenants, doesn't mean that whoever inherits the prop the uh, the property wishes to become an owner and deal with tenants. So there's there could be many reasons um, that, uh, that the person who inherits a property would wish to sell the property. And again, the incentive to sell is a little bit higher uh, than if you uh, do some random prospecting. Okay? So let's just, uh, you know, verify this this one here, 753. And then you can open up the, um, uh, the, uh, the deed, okay, and, um, and see where the, uh, the uh, liquidator lives. You have everything in the deed, okay, to find where the uh, uh, the liquidator, uh, well, to have the full address of the liquidator. And again, if you wish to uh, see if this property is uh, listed, because very often succession successions uh, will will be sold, uh, well, not quickly, but within you know within months, okay. So that was 753 Code Saint Catherine, and it's always a good uh, thing to go on your quick search. Very easy. 753 Côte Sainte-Catherine, and then I click on the hyperlink, 
and then in this case it is house for sale on Centris. It's written here. So this is a, a house that I would, you know, I would not um, try to, to list because it it already is. Um, but you see, it was uh, the transmission occurred in September and it's already on Centris. So uh, it's just to show you that it, it's a uh, it's a interesting niche. And when we do trade shows, uh, very often we'll have uh, uh, users that uh, prospect using that, and they always ask that ask us not to tell anybody because uh, they want to keep uh, this uh, secret but we say that you know Quebec is a big province and there is room for everybody so um, there you go so you know it's worth trying and it's always uh, as I say you know um, more chances of success with the volume so if you try one or two mm, well I mean I you know you might get lucky but uh, you know if you try uh, I don't know like a you know maybe a dozen or whatever that it takes, then you might have a little bit more uh, a success than just trying a few. So these are ways that uh, uh, that can uh, you know help you do some uh, different prospecting. Another way is uh, using our uh, our prospecting tool, which is a little bit different from what I was showing you. The prospecting tool, the base of this is the assessment role, meaning that if a property exists, okay, it'll be in our database. It'll show uh, it'll show up with uh, uh, your uh, uh, with the filters and um, and it'll give you the owner name okay so that's the big difference if you for instance you pull out a uh, all the owners of a uh, certain street you'll always be sure that it'll be the owner and not the resident okay as in other uh, systems that you may find uh, on the web okay so it's always the owner same thing if you're pulling out a uh, triplex on a certain street, okay, it won't be the resident, it will be all the owners. And um, I'll show you an example, and it's it's uh, it's funny because uh, one one user uh, actually told me that uh, he saved so much time using that tool, him and his secretary, they uh, they worked um, Il Desa, the, the, the big uh, condo towers, and it was always uh, very time consuming to keep the, uh, the owner, um, owner file up to date, it was a condo tower, 200 condos and uh, when he uh, found out that he could pull out the list that easily on JLR uh, he was wondering how come he didn't know this before I'll just show you what we did so we we're on prospecting tool and then we went on uh, municipality so that's again in Montreal okay and it was a big uh, tower called the uh, Chemin du Club Marin and uh, so what we did is we actually found the club Marin right here and it was 200 the address it's a big address 200 to 300 Chemin du Club Marin so it's about 200 condos and um, that's it we'll leave it all residential it's actually condos but it wouldn't make a difference because it's just condos okay now by putting this in the system okay and I'm in prospecting tool um, I will get the list of all the owners, okay, their names, not the residents. And by the way, CMHC says that uh, approximately 20% of condos are, are rented out, 20%. And uh, that's in, Mont in the Montreal area, but as well as in Quebec City. It goes a little bit uh, down in uh, outside uh, Montreal, but it's actually up to 20%. So that's why it's, uh, you know, using JLR is actually... Um, uh, a good idea because you actually get the owner and not who actually who lives there. Now I have a choice of prospecting list and I hope it's big enough for you to see uh, the buttons on prospecting list and I also have mailing label list. So for this first example I'll leave it on the first button. I'll show you uh, what is actually uh, created uh, with this search here. Now remember, if there's fees, I will be advised for this example. Um, per uh, address, the uh, the cost is 15 cents. So just to put everything in perspective, uh, if I had 100 uh, addresses, okay, that would be 15 dollars. Now this, <laughs> doing this on your own and getting all the owners uh, is very time consuming. So just you know, putting everything in perspective, 15 dollars is not. Uh, not that much to get a uh, such a uh, interesting list. For example, I have the very first first I have about 32 pages, okay, of about uh, I would say between six and seven per page. So the way it shows on the uh, on the uh, pages, you have the address here of the condo, 
you have the name of the uh, the owner. Okay, in this case, it's uh, Richard Bergeron. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what's great is that uh, we also give you the last transaction we have on that property. So let's say you set up to be, you know, to call these these owners. We have a 411 link, and again, it's a link that's not um, <clears throat> linked to the um, uh, the do not call list. So you have to uh, be careful. But we do provide the link so to make it easier for you. And uh, what's interesting is that we know that this owner bought the uh, the condo back in 1991. Okay, so we know that he's been an owner for a very, very long time, okay, and this is a, a, an excellent uh, lead from your prospect because um, it's been a long time and uh, he paid 184 so we actually have the price and we have the current assessment, 369 Okay, so this is very interesting information. I don't have to look left and right to find all this information. I have it all here, okay, and the second one, um, bought in, you know, in 2003, this one, um, 2001, so these are all, and this one just bought here, September 2015, okay, for 308. So it's all um, uh, centralized information on this page, so I have the owner and I have one they bought, or the last, or the mortgage they took, so because it's a last transaction, so it makes it very easy to excuse me, have centralized information. And this uh, tower has over 200 owners and I have them all here. So I could, and th if this is in fact, uh, you know, a, 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 a condos that I work in Nuns Island and whatnot, this is an excellent uh, list, okay? And I can maybe print it every three months to make sure that it's always up to date. Now let's say I go back here and uh, just another example, I uh, do, um, multi uh, multi unit buildings in the uh, uh, Rosemont area and I have an owner who's looking for a you know a small one between uh, nine and ten units so I could actually do the same thing okay and go in municipality this time and then I would put instead of comma I would say Rosemont okay and then category well I would change to four to 11 apartments, which is a category here. Now it could specify the number of units. So let's say I want nine to 10, okay? And just to make sure that you're following it, th these are not for sale, right? These are properties that exist. I'm, I'm looking in the, uh, the assessment role part. And, um, and what I want to find out is where are these, what the addresses are of these properties and who the owners are. Um, instead of uh, leaving it on prospection list, I will put in mailing label list right here, okay? And this means that I want uh, labels to be printed or an Excel uh, spreadsheet if I want to do mail merge, okay? But we'll just go with the Avery 5160, which means that you put, I'm sure you've all seen this, is the uh, eight and a half by 11 um, page with three uh, columns of stickers. You put in the, uh, your printer and then you'd have your, you know, your ready to go um, labels to be put on envelope with your letter and whatnot, okay? So basically what I do is I click on the search button and then the system will produce a, uh, a Avery 5160 format okay, of uh, labels to print. It's formatting, won't be long. Okay, so it created a PDF here, right on the left, if you can see it, and I am going to open it, and there we go. So this is ready to print, okay, and I have all my owners here. And again, they're not tenants, they're the owners. And I'm often asked, what address do you put? It's the owner's address. It's not the, <laughs> the multi-unit address. So when we have a deed, um, we uh, obviously have the, uh, the uh, multi-unit address. But, we'll, you know, the, the purchaser always has uh, the private address. So that's the address we use for this list here. So we always uh, try to give you the, uh, you know, the most recent address for the, uh, for the owners. And there we go. We have it all here. So this is very handy uh, to have, okay, and for prospecting. So you can do this, and you can uh, actually um, search or rather get results for up to 500. If it's over 500, uh, then the system will tell you to refine your search. Okay, you could not uh, say I want all the, uh, I don't know, six units and above in Montreal. There's more than 500. The system would say refine your search. Okay, so you always have to keep that uh, in mind. So that was for the. Um, 
the prospecting tool. Now, um, let's say you, um, you know, you try successions and 60-day uh, notices and you actually get lucky and you get a listing and you think, well, you know what, I'm going to make this my niche, you know, my market, except I don't want to go in the system and, you know, request these types of information every day. I'd like JLR to actually uh, give me a heads up if there's uh, at some point some kind of, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, 60 day notice or whatever that's registered in my area. So you can put an alert, okay, and that's what I was getting at. The JLR alert here. Let's say, as uh, my previous example, I work the Pierre Font area and um, I'd like to put an alert, and so that JLR tells me if there's a 60 day notice and a succession that gets registered in, in Pierre Font. You just go in alert, and the middle tab, sector alert, you click on that one, add an alert on a municipality. Simple as that. So see, that's what I want to do. Montreal, borough, I can specify the borough I want. Pierrefonds. Okay, and then building category, all residential. Yeah, that's what I want. And transa transaction type, excuse me, transmission. Okay, so I would just click on put an alert. And then I would do it again because we can't put two at a time. I would say 60 day notice, put an alert. So I'd have two alerts for Pierrefonds, 60 day notice and succession. And instead of me going every day to, uh, you know, to check, and sometimes you may not uh, remember, uh, the system will do it for you. It will send you an email. It won't be a full, uh, uh, an email with the full information. It'll just be a heads up saying Montreal, Roxborough, Pierrefonds, uh, residential 60 day notice. Okay, we won't have the address, but at least it's a heads up. You know that you have to go in JLR and actually find what the uh, we what the addresses are, and um, and then do your prospecting from that. So uh, that's it with the uh, uh, prospecting tools. Now, the as for the the pricing, as I mentioned, the 60 60 day notices are three dollars each but you have a pre-selection and the uh, successions are $2 each and uh, you have pre-selection as well, which means that if you have a, uh, um, a result page with, uh, let's say, uh, 20, you don't have to consult them all. You can just check maybe three or four or five and then the system will just charge you for these uh, accordingly. And the prospecting tool here where we have the labels and the list uh, for the, uh, remember, the uh, the condo tower that's 15 cents each okay and, uh, and it's always uh, it will always be advised of the price prior now if you um, start using these types of uh, documents you know for your prospecting on a regular basis it could be uh, interesting maybe just to, to upgrade to the expert package because right now all of you are on the pro package with your uh, uh, with your realtor but Banyar and um, going up to the expert package will uh, provide you with 100 uh, extra fiches per month. And when we say extra fiches, it's not just sold properties because right now that's what you have. It's sold properties. You have up to 100. But if you upgrade to the expert, you will have an extra 100 that can be uh, successions, 60-day notices, combination of all that. The quick search as well here because this is usually one dollar so it's a combination of all these types of uh, documents and you have 100 uh, extra per month and the cost to upgrade to this is uh, 400 uh, for the year. Okay so if you just do a quick calculation and let's say you do excuse me start using 60-day notices and just for example let's say you do consult 160-day notices um, you know, per month. So at three dollars each, that would cost you three hundred dollars a month. Okay, and over a twelve-month period, it would it would cost you thirty-six hundred. And I know that you probably would do that, but it's just to show you that at four hundred dollars for twelve months, it's a very good deal because you're allowed to consult one hundred of these types of documents uh, monthly. So. Uh, that's an option for you upgrading to the expert package and you may want to try it uh, as well without the expert package just paying a la carte and see if it's something for you and again it's all in the way to do it tout est dans l'approche and if you uh, you know you find that it's interesting and you know you listed uh, a few properties then you might consider going to the expert package should you want to do that you can give me a call my name is Monique my phone number is 514-655 Five one three four, and uh, if you have any questions or um, regarding what I've showed you, you can uh, email me as well. My
monique, M-O-N-I-C-K, at JLR.ca. If you have questions relating to how to go about in the, uh, the menu or you forgot something, um, you can also click on the Contact Us button. Uh, it's open from 8 till uh, 5 in the afternoon weekdays. And uh, if it's, uh, you need immediate assistance, you're better off going on the Contact button as opposed to calling me because I'm, <laughs> I do webinars and uh, demos in offices. But otherwise, feel free to contact me if it's nothing urgent. So I will say have a good day and thank you uh, for attending this webinar.